This video explains how to change the space between box plots using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples and for all of these examples, we need to create an example data frame as you can see in lines two to four of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data set called data is appearing at the top right of our studio. And we can print the first six rows of this data set using the head function, as you can see in line five of the code. And then you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that our data frame contains two columns, which are called group and value. And the group column indicates which of the values correspond to which of the box plots. Now, if you want to draw these data using the default width specifications of the box plot function, then we can apply the code that you can see in lines seven and eight. So after running these lines of code, you can see that at the bottom right of our studio, a new box plot graphic is shown. And this graphic shows five different box plots with the default width specifications. Now, if we want to increase the space between these boxes, we can use the code that you can see in lines 10 to 12. So in lines 10 to 11, I'm using basically the same syntax as in lines seven and eight. And then I'm also using the add argument. And to this argument, I'm specifying the seek function in combination with the length and the table functions. And then I'm specifying the space that should be contained between these boxes. So if you run lines 10 to 12 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our box plot is updated. And as you can see, we have increased the space between our boxes. It's also possible to use different spaces between different boxes, as you can see in the next example in lines 14 to 16 of the code. So in this example, I'm once again using the add argument. However, this time I'm specifying a vector object which defines the positions of our boxes and the spaces between those boxes. So if you run lines 14 to 16 of the code, you can see that another box plot graphic is appearing at the bottom right. And this time the spaces between the different boxes are different and we have specified these different spaces based on this add argument. So in the previous lines of code, I have shown how to change the space between boxes of a base R box plot. However, it's also possible to use the ggplot2 package for this task. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 18 of the code. So as a first step, we need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 18 and 19 of the code. I have installed the package already. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 19 of the code. And then we can create a ggplot2 box plot, as you can see in lines 21 to 24. So after running these lines of code, a new box plot graphic is appearing at the bottom right. And as you can see, the width of these boxes is corresponding to the default specifications of the ggplot2 package. Now, if we want to increase the space between these boxes, we can use the width argument within the geoboxplot function, as you can see in lines 26 to 29 of the code. So in this case, I want to decrease the size of our boxes. And for that reason, I'm choosing a width which is smaller than one. So in this case, I'm setting the width argument to be equal to 0.3. So after running lines 26 to 29 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that our box plot graphic is updated. And this time the boxes are thinner. And for that reason, the space between the boxes has been increased. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.